Hey YouTube, we are back at it again with another tax video, but this time we're going through H&R Block. And I've never actually used H&R Block. I thought about it last year. I didn't end up using it because I'm lazy and everything's already saved onto my TurboTax account. If you are an H&R Block, H Block user, you've never tried, you want to try something, you're teetering on whether or not you want to use TurboTax because, you know, TurboTax screwed over a lot of people last year. Whatever it is, whatever the reason, today I'm walking through it with you. For the simplest filing, of course, it's not going to apply to everybody, but for a lot of people, it will apply. And I probably might end up doing like two different versions. So stick with it. If you're interested, sit down as I walk through step by step how to use H&R Block to file your taxes online. I'll leave a bunch of links down in the description if you need more help, if you just end up having to go to H&R Block itself, you know, however that works. Um, it's all going to be down there for you. So sit down, grab some coffee or something stronger, and let's go. I'm all logged into H&R Block, and I just wanted to say before I start that I did experience a lot of issues creating an account. The last time I did a tutorial like this, I was able to start without creating an account, an account but I guess since then H&R Block has made it so that you can't start without creating an account first. And my regular testing email that I was using for all of these tutorials wasn't working for some reason. I tried for like three days and it just, I never got a confirmation code. I had to use a different email. So if you're having any issues with that, you're not alone. Um, if you're not great, just keep going, but wanted to throw that out there. Try maybe a different email uh, and see if that works. And hopefully you figure it out. If you don't leave me a comment down below, maybe I can dig into that more. All right, so we're on the main page. This is what it looks like after you log in. I haven't verified myself. This is a brand new account, um, obviously because last time I didn't create one. So you would have to go through and actually verify who you are as a real person because this is a testing account. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm just gonna hit get started on my taxes. How much help would you like? This depends on you. Obviously you're watching this because it's a tutorial, maybe you haven't done it before or you're looking for a specific answer. Because of that, I'm going to say I want to do my own taxes. I think most of you on here are looking to figure out how to do it on your own with as little help as possible, obviously, because all that help comes with extra fees. Alrighty, in this tutorial, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I did get a request to do it with dependents. So I'm going to say, yes, I do have kids. I um, did not own a home. I did have a savings account. I want to maximize my credits and deductions. I didn't. I wasn't self-employed or with student loans or anything. Didn't own a business, and then I gave to charity. These are kind of standard. Um, I'm gonna throw these out there. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. It's gonna be simpler for you. If you have something else, it'll just take you to that tab, and you'll fill out that information. And if you have questions about those things, then you can let me know, and I can walk you through those, um, either in the comments or in a different video as needed. Okay, just like TurboTax, they're going to offer you more help because they wanted to maximize credits and deductions. I'm having to pay the deluxe fee. Obviously, it's $35 and the state return is going to be $37 for my state. If you wanted to upgrade with the tax pro, you could do it for $65 or you could get both for $100. I'm just going to say deluxe is fine. Already, I know I'm paying about $80 bucks after everything's done just for my state return and my federal return and knowing that going into it is, is actually really nice ahead of time instead of like hey we're at the end you're all done by the way you're paying this because i know TurboTax does that i love that h&r block kind of already threw it in our face and we know at this point okay i'm gonna just stop and not follow it with h&r block and choose something else or i'm gonna you know move forward knowing how much i'm gonna be paying and so that's a great feature how did you file your taxes last year? I'm going to say I used another tax company. I did actually use TurboTax last year. Um, if you didn't file, just click that. If you used H&R Block, it's just going to be easier for you because then you'll be able to link your old account or upload a copy of yours and they'll link everything for you. I'm going to say I use another company and they're actually asking you. So if you don't know what else is out there, they're telling you right here what the big ones are. I'm going to say I use TurboTax. Let's import last year's tax return to save you some work. This is where I was saying you can drag and drop it here. If you have it, that's great. If you don't, you can actually skip the import and type it in all manually yourself if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and do that since this, I don't have one for this purpose. 
and they're just reminding you that it saves time to import it, but we'll just go ahead and skip it for this purpose. Boom, right in your face, meet AI tax assist. You can ask questions here. This is h and Block's new thing. Their AI is gonna help you work through it all if you need it. I'm gonna exit out and it's always right here if you need to pop that out open again. All right, let's get acquainted. All your personal information is gonna go here. And again, we're just doing this, making it up. Oh, I'm so used to the 20, uh, 2000s now. Let's say we're married just for this purpose so you guys can kind of see how that works. TurboTax is the preparer, and then I'm not legally blind or preparing this for someone who passed. Nice to meet you. What's your social security number? Hopefully, they just let me make one up. Check these off if those are true for you. How do you wanna file with your spouse? I'm gonna file jointly. Okay, excited to meet my spouse. And we're just going to give him the same birthday as me because I am not in the mood to be creative right now. Okay, what is his spouse's social security number? Again, just making it up. Hopefully, they accept this. Contact information, a daytime phone. Let's go with... I apologize if that's your number. It's not a real one. Please don't take it. It's someone else's number. Okay. Um... We're in St. Paul, that was automated and in care of. If you are trying to send it, if there's multiple people, you wanna make sure it gets to someone specific or someone else takes care of the mail you can do in care of and they'll make sure that it goes to that specific person to open it. If not, just leave it blank. Did you both live in Minnesota all year? Yes. Okay, tax questions, let's go. We're both citizens. Oh, and it just kind of goes. That's nice. I don't have to click next. Was your spouse a student? No. Did you claim, did someone else claim either of you as a dependent? No, we took care of ourselves. Do you have any independence? I'm going to say yes, because somebody had requested this from me. Household, your household members can boost your refund, which is great, guys. This is why we have kids. <laughs> Half kidding. Okay. Kid testing. Um, I wonder if this is, maybe it is required. Just put one in there. We're going to give that kid the same birthday as well. But we'll say they were born in 2020. All right, relationship, uh, we'll say daughter. Any of these situations apply. They lived with me the whole year. They're a U.S. citizen, valid for employment. Um, they're not married. They didn't pass away, any of these. I'm just going to leave the rest of them blank. Okay, it shows your kid is your dependent. Great. There they are. If you need to add more, you can add more. And it doesn't have to be a kid. It could be someone else, an older relative that's living with you that depends on you for most of their um, financial needs. I'm going to say next. Your filing status is married filing jointly. If you wanted to see if you qualify for something else, you could. I'm going to say that's great and move on. And then everything is summarized here. Let's personalize your H&R Block experience. This is just agreeing to share tax details with H&R Block for offers. I don't want any of that stuff, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna say no thanks. And again, I'm gonna click no thanks for that. Let's dive into your income. Do you wanna start in your W-2s? I think that's one of the biggest things people are putting in. Most people have one of these, and so that's why I'm gonna go ahead do you want to start on your W-2s? I think that's one of the biggest things that people have. I'm going to go ahead and start this. If you wanted to skip it, you could. If you didn't receive your W-2 yet, that's fine. You could skip it and come back later. I'm going to go ahead and start now. You could directly import it from your company. This is the quickest way they highlight it in blue there. It's such a pretty blue. Okay, you could put in your EIN from your company if you wanted to import it. Because I'm making this up, I'm gonna do manual, but you can also upload a PDF or snap a picture depending on what is available um, to you from your company. I'm gonna do it manually. This is for me. Let's make up that nine digit number. And you guys know that I, uh, have been working at YouTube Industries this year during my tutorials. So I will just go with that. And all of this is pulled through and fake, so do not 
worry about my identity. Okay, all that's filled in. Wages and tips. You're going to make sure this is, okay, this is box one right here. Make sure that matches your W-2. Box one to one, two to two, all of that good stuff. I'm just going to throw numbers in here so that you guys can see what it looks like when I actually go through. Seven, eight, nine, ten. They're not as common. If you have the, if you have them, put them in. If you don't, then just leave them blank. Twelve A and D. They're these specific things that were taken out of your paycheck. If you've got those, put it in. If you don't, then don't. Let's say that. Here we go. Employee sponsored health coverage. Whatever you have there, put that in. I'm going to say four thousand dollars. Just throwing a code in. If you have more, you can add more. If you don't, just leave it at the one or blank. 13, any of these, you can mark those down if you have them marked on your W-2. If not, just leave it blank. And then there's box 14 again if you have it, otherwise leave it blank. State and local information, if you don't have this on your W-2, you can delete it. If you do, then you can fill it out. I'm just going to fill this out really quick. And move on if you need to add another state um, from this same employer you can otherwise next okay employer identification number is not valid that is true I made that up I... okay so I just found a random one and I stuck it in there and then I'm gonna click next hopefully that works yep it worked okay make sure yours matches yours don't go find a random one like I did <laughs> tell us if any of these apply to this w2 if they do click them if they don't then don't they're not as common so it might not and that's fine review all of your information just make sure it's all correct and hit next and then there's a summary of my YouTube industries if you have another w2 add it I'm going to just because I put down that I have a spouse so I'm gonna make one up for my spouse here Use the same one I used earlier. Um, let's say he also works at the same place as me. And then we're just going to say that he made um, some money. And I'm just putting this down. So again, make sure that yours matches yours and not like mine we'll say the same thing that he had um, health coverage I don't remember what I put down okay and we'll add also that he for this case um, had a 401k box 13 14 again going through the same exact thing um, let me see here And then hitting next you're gonna make sure yours at adds up to your spouse's information both your w-2s are correct any of these uncommon situations again click them if they apply if not otherwise that's fine it walks through the same steps making sure everything's correct and now we've got both um, mine and my spouse's in here I'm gonna click next what do you do let's say I am um, in speech therapy Megan needs up, you guys. And we'll say he's in customer service. Oh, look at this. It even pops up as an option. Did you sell, receive, exchange, or dispose of any cryptocurrency? I'm going to say no. Any foreign assets? No. Did you earn in any money in any states besides Minnesota? For this purpose, I'm going to say no. Okay, summarizing income. This is our profile, both of us together. If you need to revisit to correct anything, you can. Otherwise, hit next. Here's all your income that we know about. Again, you can edit it if you need to. Make sure that number is correct and hit next. Deductions and adjustments. There is nothing there yet. We're going to want to look at least and add some that we know of. And they've got a list here. If you paid any taxes on personal property, real estate, charitable contributions, your student loan interest, mortgage interest. I said earlier that we do have charitable contributions. 
and donations. So I'm going to click that. If you want to see more, then they've got the whole full list for you and you can go through all of them. Actually, I just clicked that open and I did say that um, Cheng had one. So I'm going to walk through this, but I'm going to say yes to um, the IRA. And then I'm also going to say yes to the um, charitable donations that say that I donated things to Goodwill. And I'm going to put that in non-cash donations and click yes. Now, whatever I said yes to, it's going to walk us through. Cash donations or out-of-pocket donations, volunteer expenses. If you donated to like a church, if you were tithing, you can put that there. If you have non-cash donations, like I was saying, we donated stuff to, um, you know, Goodwill. We could put that in there. It looks like the H&R Block actually doesn't have that form yet. Uh, I was able to do it with TurboTax the other day, but because H&R Block's not allowing us to, just so you guys know, when you get to that screen, it's just going to ask you how much you donated. Um, sometimes if it's a lot of money, if it's more than like $500, they'll have you itemize it and say, you know, what did you donate on what day and how much was it worth? And then lastly, the traditional contributions, and that also isn't working. So h and Block, you're a little behind. With this one, um, I wanted to go through this because I wanted to mention that this is going to be contributions you made outside of your actual paycheck. If you only made contributions to your 401k through your employer, through your paycheck, this is not the place to put it. You already put it in. It's going to be one of those line items on your W-2 under number 12, which I was showing you guys earlier. If you didn't make any extras, this is not going to be something you put on there. If you made extra contributions outside of your workplace, then you would do it here. It can be to the same account or it can be to a different private account, but you would get a form um, that you would then enter in this area. And they would just ask you how much it was on there. It would kind of work like the W-2 where there's different box numbers and you have to make sure it matches up to the exact form that you got from that company. But since nothing's ready, we're going to move on. It looks like the standard deduction is the best choice for you. If you wanted to change your deduction, you could and itemize it. Just And that just means putting in more detail line by line to see if you get more or more back or not, or if you pay less. Because I don't have enough to claim, then the standard deduction is the highest for me. I'm gonna get the most money back or pay the least with this deduction. And so I'm gonna say, yep, that's good to go, next. Here is everything we know about. Again, it's the standard deduction. If you have questions, you can click on these little help bars and they will pop up showing exactly what that entails. All right, let's get started on your credits. And there is that child tax credit. That's the one thing they do already know that we have. We've got the kid. Okay, have you had a claim for any of these credits that was denied in the last 10 years? If you did, you could say yes. If not, you just say no. I'm going to say no. It's not normal for you to be denied. Maybe you had a special case. I know every time I've filed with my kids in real life, I've never been denied. I've always just been ex it's been accepted. Um, so I'm going to say no. Congrats. We maximized your credit. So you get 2000 bucks for this kid. Woo. Okay. That totally pays back for everything that all those diapers and everything. Right, guys? Um, and then next, if you want to revisit it, you could. I'm trying to find... Oh, okay. This is... That's kind of hard to see. It's not like in your face and green like it is everywhere else that I've tried. So far, we're getting, it looks like, $2,561 um, back. I, was, I didn't realize if I was getting it back or not, but then I did this, and it popped up a refund or O meter, which, you know, it's black okay we'll figure it out i'm gonna hit next let's start on your taxes payments and penalties uh, next did you have health insurance yes we were all covered all year through uh, my spouse's insurance which i listed er earlier if you weren't you may have to pay a penalty but in this case i'm gonna say yes and just hit next what kind of insurance did you have? It was through an employer. There's all these different options for you as well to look through. Generally, people know what they have. If you're confused, then I would take a look at your forms and see what matches up and what it's listed as, and you should be able to figure it out. Thanks, that is all we needed to know. Alrighty, the tax section is done here. 
here is everything we know about again just summarizing all of it and these numbers are taken from your w2s that you put in so if you're wondering where that came from all right wrapping up federal taxes here are some things we're going to ask you about estimated tax payments allowing someone else to discuss your return with the irs and then designating money for the presidential campaign do any of these apply to you again making estimated payments language preferences additional forms that you might need and miscellaneous i'm just going to say no none of those things and wrap it up if the button works <laughs> if i press it correctly okay federal accuracy report or review report these are forms we need but they don't have um, at this time if you wanted to fix the issue it's not ready yet this would only work if you came back in the future when hr block actually has that form so at this point in time i would actually if this is what showed up for you i would just um, go over here and do save and exit if you can't really see it when I scroll but it says save and exit I would save and exit and then I would come back at a later time and check to see if H&R Block has it then I would fix the issue the form should populate and then you can enter in all that information right now because H&R Block doesn't have that form I can't do that so I'm going to skip for now I'm going to pretend like I already filled it out and just bring you to the end screen if they let me Okay, federal refund. There we go. See, we were. I was confused this whole time. Back in the back in the day, <laughs> two years ago, um, or maybe it was just last year. I when I did this, it was like green. So I was like, oh, green means green means go. Uh, green means that I was getting a refund, and then red would mean that I was paying it, or black was that I was paying it. And it just kind of sat over here in this tiny little thing, and so that confused me. But now I'm at the end. It's saying, oh, you get a refund. And this is how we calculated it. You can view the full summary or you just click next, but good to know that this is a refund because I didn't know before. And now they're prepping my Minnesota tax return. Minnesota is a state that I have to file taxes in. Um, I am going to run through this really quick, but I'm gonna skip it in the video just because this doesn't apply to everybody. And uh, Minnesota's can be specific to what Minnesota wants me to file and every single state's gonna be a little bit different and then some states don't even require it so I'm gonna skip this and then I will walk you guys through the filing at the end there after completing everything I will still brought to this I can't finish or file yet because H&R Block is saying they're not done they don't have these forms for me but I will walk you through what happens at the end you're gonna be given another review one last time of everything to make sure everything is completely correct if you need to go back and fix anything, you still can at this point. Once that's done, you are going to be prompted to upgrade if you want to, again, for all the protections, all the extra things that they offer. If you don't want to, you can opt out at that point. It's up to you. You'll be given a screen to show you exactly what is owed to H&R Block to be paid to file your taxes, what your refund is going to be, or what your amount to be paid is going to be. If you're getting a refund, then you'll be able to set up like a direct deposit, or I'm not sure if H&R Block this year is gonna be offering any kind of like cash card or just a check, but you'll be able to set up your preferences to be getting paid. If you're not getting a return and you have to pay, then you'll be given the option to set up a way to pay the fees that you owe alongside any um, taxes that you owe to the IRS. And you can either mail in a check or you'll be able to just use like a credit card to pay for that at that time. Once all of that is done, you'll also be able to download your returns in a PDF file. So all this information you put in, H&R Block is going to spit it out in a PDF form and you can download or print it at that time. They will save it for the next year for you. So you can always go back in and um, pull that out and be able to access it again. That is H&R Block for you in a wrap for this year. I definitely think they changed the platform since the last time I used it. It's not to me, it's not as user friendly. And um, like I was saying, this is a, it's a small thing to be like, oh my gosh, this is tiny and black in the corner. But to me, it makes a difference because people wanna be seeing that it's a big deal. Like, oh, what am I getting back? Am I paying? We don't know. At this point, because I did state, you can see it's negative 401, so I'm paying that. And then this is positive but i think if you were just doing federal you wouldn't know yet if you're watching this obviously now you know when you go and file but that was a little bit confusing 
And I think it's just, everything's just kind of smaller to me this year. It's not as in your face and like positive and fun as it was last time I did it. Again, that does not matter for everyone. For me, when I'm doing stressful things like this, time consuming things like this, it's nice to have those little little positive affirmations and it makes it more fun. So definitely if you want the fun factor, if you want the positive kind of greeting you in your face factor, H&R Block downsized a little bit with that, but it's not a huge deal. It still gets your taxes done. You still know exactly what's going on and you get all the benefits that H&R Block does offer. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, leave them down below. I will check those and try to get back to everyone who comments. Appreciate all your support. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned to what else is coming out this year from me. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.